Hello, Abraham. Nice to see you. Uh, thank you for all you do. I just... Uh, we do nothing. I just wanted to check in with you, report how I'm doing. Um, things are going better and better. Um, financial situation is easing up. Um, my daughter is blossoming. My wife is blossoming. Uh, things are going well. And uh, just appreciate so much uh, all the tools you've given us. I had a broad question and then a more specific question. Um, the broad one has to do with perception. Uh, I've heard you say things like, uh, there's no right or wrong, and someone can have a perception of power or perception of powerlessness. My question is, if you're observing something, whatever it is, if it's a book or a person or a, a situation, and if everyone's perception is everything, then what is actually there? What are we looking at? Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, well, th that's a really good observation and a, a very good place for a good discussion because it's less important whether any two people actually agree on anything. What is important is what the object of your attention is doing relative to the agreement between you and you. Mm -hmm. In other words, most of you, when you're born, are born to parents and teachers who have already formed opinions about things, about right and wrong, right and wrong behavior, particularly. So as you enter their environment, they have an opinion about your behavior that they teach to you relatively quickly so that you get feedback from them about what their opinion is about your behavior, just like you get feedback from them about what their opinion is about everything. The closer you are to those people and their opinion, the more likely you are to develop the same opinion because their response to you is dependent upon your response to their opinion. It's interesting, isn't it? You begin to learn. It's the way you train horses and, and animals. You reward them when they please you and you don't reward them or even punish them when they displease you. And so it's really an interesting thing how these opinions begin to grow. Now, your question is somewhat spawned by the conversation that we just had about this platform that is the bouncing off place for the expansion. In other words, what makes reality seem real is that you are interpreters of vibration and your eyes interpret vibration so you see, your ears interpret vibration so you hear. And because you're hanging around with each other and talking about what you're seeing and hearing and so on, you have these sort of standards. You, there are eye charts that are the standards of how you should see. And if you vary from the chart, they want to do something about it. They'll give you glasses because they've decided what is the best way to see? What is the best way to hear? Esther will say to Jerry, can you hear that? She's very sensitive to vibration, so she can hear things in the engine or things in the air conditioner or things in motors. She's a bit dog-like in that way. She hears <laughs> oddly. And Jerry will say, I can't hear it. And then Esther is sometimes annoyed with him that he doesn't try to hear it. <laughs> Like if you just focus and try a little harder, maybe you could hear it. And, and Jerry is not, he doesn't really understand why it's important to Esther that he also hear what's annoying her. <laughs> but in all of this interaction with one another, you develop these agreements. And that agreement becomes your sort of mass consciousness reality. And yet... As you move around, you could be a hundred people walking down the same street in the same city at the same time having a hundred different experiences because your point of attraction varies enough that what you're soliciting from this, what seems to be reality, here's really the best answer to this wonderful question. 
the reality that you're drawing from is such a huge palette that you have the ability to paint such unique pictures. You don't have to paint pictures just like everyone else is painting. And yet almost as soon as you're born, your society wants to put you into a more contrived or limited place of a palette. They will say to you, these are the things you can study in school. There's mathematics and there's history and there's geology and there's biology and they have a handful of things and the diversity grows and shrinks and grows and shrinks sort of depending upon the economy. But the most interesting thing is that your society is not really eager about newcomers coming and reaching too far outside the prescribed curriculum about anything. And yet you're born intending to create a whole new curriculum. The new ones who are born have a whole different vibrational basis. They see the world very differently. You talk about a generation gap. It is a vibration gap because as this vortex grows, it is from that newest expanded vibrational stance that new energies are coming in. So now come back to the beginning of your question. We've sort of laid a basis here. Well, when you look at any phenomena, again, whether it's an inanimate object or a, a, a being with consciousness, um, since people are interpreting it in a in hundred different ways, depending on where their point of attraction is, what's actually there? Is it just neutral? This is really interesting. This conversation on the heels of a conversation that Jerry and Esther had with Abraham yesterday. So consider this, someone gave them some books that were received in a similar way that Esther receives Abraham that were very different from what Esther receives. It was about the cleansing of the earth. It was about end times. It was about why things are happening, about uh, the evil ones needing to be eradicated so that good can prevail all of that um, religiously based mumbo jumbo that is at the heart of the unworthiness that is at the heart of most dissension that is at the heart of most unhappiness of people and so Esther just leafed through it briefly didn't really want to uh, activate anything about it but then wanted to talk to us about it and so we had a rather long discussion and we said, in this understanding of how, as the problem is coming into focus, so is the solution. So let's just say that in your human form, you've identified a problem, which means immediately there is a solution that comes into awareness that source or what man wants to call God is aware of. And we want to talk about the problem and the solution in frequency terms that the problem is laden with resistance and the solution is absent of resistance following so now there's a range that is quantifiable vibrationally really between the problem and the solution so now along comes someone like Esther who is an interpreter of vibration who lives in the physical world and so has some of this vibration going on, but who tunes in through meditation and through appreciation and through her process, tunes in to the frequency of Abraham. So in an environment like this, where you come with great expectations and Esther prepares herself, Esther comes so close to the vibration of Abraham that she seamlessly or nearly so receives our transmission and translates them into a verbal description and as well as can be experienced describes this higher vibration but of course it cannot be the vibration as we know it because it's being translated through something that is not completely absent of resistance you're following so now consider this range of vibration again which goes from the problem to the solution let's just call it that range every person who is perceiving this subject 
is actually at a different place of perception depending upon where they are that's why we've been saying when you are among many who are an eyewitness to an account your description has much more to do with who you are and how you're feeling when you observed it than what actually happened because you are seeing what happened through your descriptive vibrational perception so what does that mean that means that no two are seeing exactly the same but it also means and this is the message that we are really wanting to convey in a way that can be meaningful and beneficial to all of you we want your relationship with who you are to be the only relationship that is really important to you and when you stop trying to contour your opinions to the opinions of others and you allow yourself to begin contouring your awareness to the awareness of the source within you who is resistance free and who is really what you're reaching for in other words talk about wellness talk about clarity talk about abundance when you tune yourself to the frequency to the non-resistant frequency then you thrive and soar in ways that are impossible otherwise but even more important to the the thriving in terms of the achieving of things is that you thrive in the alignment of the wholeness of who you are there's no more split energy within you so perspective is really an interesting thing you cannot be in this room without being influenced to some degree by those who are around you. Mm -hmm. Esther followed some people in from the seminar uh, at a seminar ago and the kitchen path elevator wasn't working and so they came with the crowd and uh, Esther overheard two women talking and one of them said, but what if Abraham's wrong? <laughs> what if? this really isn't the way that it is and Esther slowed way down she did not want that woman to turn around and find her right behind them <laughs> she did not want to have that conversation but you cannot help but notice what the beliefs and opinions of others are and almost everyone is trying to adjust their beliefs and opinions to something that surrounds them which inevitably distracts them from the guidance that they were born with because the fact of the matter is and this is the hardcore answer to your very wonderful question since you are the creator of your reality each of you are creating a unique reality unique only unto you and that's why it is so confounding to so many of you to bog yourself down in the opinions of others now it's a wonderful thing to come together as a society or as a family or as a team and bounce off one another it's a wonderful thing to have your personal selfish ideas of what could be better be born out of your surroundings that is so beneficial but what hangs you up then is you launch your rocket and then you get timid and insecure and you want to know what others think about the rocket that you've launched when they can't possibly give you any accurate feedback because they weren't standing where you stood when you launched it they're not standing where the larger part of you is standing now that it is launched in other words they're always somewhere in between the problem and the solution and they're only in between the problem and the solution of the life they've lived they can't even begin to be accurate in their evaluation of your opinions of what you've launched you see so does that make you feel alone does it make you feel powerful if we were standing in your physical shoes the way that conversation would make us feel what it would alert us to is the powerful important uniqueness of our beingness and it would also free us to explore with passion the ideas that have been born out of what we are living we would spend so little time wondering what anybody else thinks about what we are doing it would be just irrelevant and we would have one interest in an opinion and that would be the opinion of the expanded version of us and our relationship to it really good did we get there for you yes very good thank you